Toki, mian misli. Nili sito in tawa napatu on kulupu pi sito in tawa ni. Sina ken kama sona e toki pona. Sito in tawa ni li yo e sona pinimi e. This is the second video in a 12 part series about toki pona. In the previous lesson, we learned about the verb marking particle li, and we also went over some basic fundamental vocabulary. Just as a refresher, let's try one example sentence with last episode's vocab. What does yam pona ona li lape mean? Right, that's something like, her friend is sleeping, with some room for interpretation with the pronoun and the tense. Oh, also, this is probably a good time to talk about how to use this series. Many of you will just be watching these casually as they're uploaded, which is totally fine. Just passively absorbing content from these videos will still serve as a good introduction to the language, even if you're not actively studying or anything. However, this series is mainly intended as a serious way to learn Tokipona, to the point of being able to use the language fluently. Each episode will assume you've learned the content from previous ones. If you want, you can study between episodes or take notes as you go to have in front of you. In general, in general, Togipona is pretty simple, and it shouldn't take much effort to learn the amount of content in each episode, especially compared to other languages. But if your goal is to seriously learn the language, it will take just a tiny bit more effort than watching the videos alone back to back. Anyway, in this episode, we're going to learn how to talk about objects. Oh, yeah, well, that too, but I meant in the grammatical sense. So, as you hopefully remember from last time, one of the most basic concepts of Tokipona is that you can use the particle li to separate subjects from their verbs. This allows us to say things like yan li moku, or the person eats. But what if you want to specify what it is that you're eating? Well, that's where our new friend e comes in. E functions very similarly to li, but instead of marking verbs, it marks the direct objects of sentences. For example, you can say something like yan li moku e telo. Moku can be used for drinking as well as eating, since they're the same thing. Telo can refer to any liquid, but when used without adjectives, it's common for it to just mean water, since water is the prototypical liquid. Specifying an object like this is the best way to make it clear that you're using moku as a verb to mean eat instead of be food. While mi moku could mean either I eat or I am food, mi moku e moku specifically means I eat food, completely unambiguously. It's pretty common for verbs in Tokipondo to have slightly different meanings depending on if they have an object or not, and it's something we'll see more of later on. You could also use io, a very general noun which means thing or object, to say mi moku e io for I eat something. Now that we have these two particles, Particles, li and a, we can create a very basic outline for a typical tokipona sentence. First, you have the subject of the sentence, then the particle li, except in the special case with mi or sina, then the verb, then the particle a, then the object. It's really important to understand this structure, because pretty much any tokipona sentence can be read and understood using this formula, even as we add more grammatical features later down the line. Subject, li, verb, a, object. This is the heart of Tokipona grammar. Even though the word order in this language is very strict, you always have the subject before the verb and the verb before the object, you still need these grammatical particles to mark where each part begins, because otherwise it would be super unclear how you're supposed to parse something like, say, yan moku telo. As we learned in the previous lesson, Tokipona uses modifiers like adjectives to express many concepts that would be a single word in most languages. Remember, modifiers come after the words they're describing. It's Tokipona, not pona toki. Using li and a properly helps clarify the difference between the different parts of your sentence and single noun or verb phrases. Take a verb like looking, which means look at or see. Just from looking at this definition here, how do you think you'd say something like I look at the object or I see something? That's right, it's me looking a io. There's one other very important thing with how to use a. For some verbs, like looking, it's pretty intuitive what the object of the verb would be. It's the thing that the subject sees. However, for a lot of verbs, it's not as clear. For example, pona, which as a verb means be good, doesn't really make sense as something you could use with an object. However, a sentence like ona li pona e io is still perfectly valid in Tokipona. It's just using pona in a different way from its other be good meaning. Literally, you could translate this as something like they good a thing. And in fact, you might already have an intuition for what gooding something might mean. Go on, take a guess. What does this new use of pona mean? here. Yes, it means make something good, cause something to become good, or improve something. In general, when you use a noun or adjective as a verb with an object, this is the default interpretation of what it means. It's somewhat similar to the if I suffix in English, they goodify a thing. And this is a general grammatical feature. You can say mi ike eo for I make something bad, mi yane eo for I turn something into a person, and so on. But remember, this interpretation is only there because of the presence of the object in the sentence. Without the object, these examples would have the normal is meaning of those words. That's about it for grammar for this episode. We'll be going over a few more complicated examples, but as long as you remember li, a, and modifiers coming after what they're describing, you have everything you need to parse them. Okay, let's learn some new vocab. We went over the three main pronouns in Tokipono last time, but here's another one. Mi means this or that. It can be both a noun and an adjective 
adjective, and, like all Tokipona words, can be singular or plural. And on the topic of plurality, while Tokipona doesn't have a basic grammatical way to show plural nouns, the word mute means a lot or many. This word also has a function in Tokipona's numbering system, but I don't think we're ready for that just yet. Okay, so using these words, how would you say that person sees a lot of food? Right, it's yan ni li lukin e moku mute. With li and e, we can easily determine what words in a sentence are doing, even in a longer one like this. You can see how in the object phrase, e moku mute, each new word adds a little more information about what it is that this person sees. Oh, right, and since modifiers like mute aren't exclusively adjectives, you can say the slightly different sentence, yan ni li lukin mute e moku, where mute is modifying the verb lukin instead of the noun moku. So this sentence means something like, that person looks at food a lot. Anyway, pali is a basic verb that means do or make. That's make as in create, by the way, not make as in cause. Remember, that sense of the word make is already handled by the particle a. And sona means to know or understand. Here's a good pair of adjectives to express a lot of concepts. Sui means big or important. And lili means small. And one last word for this episode, musi means fun or game. Now we can try combining these to make more complicated ideas. How would you say worker or maker? Yeah, yampali, literally a doing person. Okay, what about a snack? That's right, you could say mokulili, what is a snack if not little food? Alright, what about a lake? Yeah, you could say telosuli, or big water. Remember, these are just examples, not set phrases. Telosuli could mean lake, ocean, sea, or just a large beverage. There are also plenty of other valid ways to say all of these things. The translations we just went over just happen to be good ways to say them using the vocabulary you already have. Okay, now here's a phrase that is a bit more set in stone among Tokipona speakers. What do you think the sentence ona li pona lukin would mean? Remember, without a there, lukin is modifying pona. Yeah, literally it's something like they are visually good. In Tokipona, pona lukin is the common way to say pretty or beautiful. Okay, now that you fully understand all the content for this episode, let's try a few more full sentences to wrap up. What does sona toki li musi mean? Literally, it's talk knowledge is fun. You could translate more liberally as the knowledge of languages is fun, or even linguistics is fun. Okay, what would sina suli e musi mean? Right, something like you made the fun greater, you increased the fun, you expand the game, or you emphasize playfulness. This concept is easier to express in Tokipona than in English. Now let's do some English sentences. How would you say many people see something large? Yeah, it's yan mute li lukin e io suli. Last one, how do you say I love you? If you said mi oli ne sina, wow, really? This is so sudden, I didn't know you thought of me that way. Listen, we don't know each other that well, we're only two episodes into this educational series, so I'm not sure if- Well, that's everything for this lesson. Isn't it great how versatile everything in this language is, even at this very early level? There's another ten lessons to go from here, but if you understand everything from just these first two, you already have a really solid foundation for learning the rest of the language. See you next time. Mitawa!